Um, hello, everyone. Uh, uh, my name is Yara Merdad. I'm from the Emirates Airline Festival of Literature. Can you all hear me? Just first of all, um, we have we run a festival from the this year will be from the fourth to the eighth of March in the Intercontinental in Festival City. We have an array of uh, sessions and workshops from uh, children's sessions from ages four up to eighteen, and uh, adult sessions as well. Sorry. <laughs> and adult sessions as well if you'd be interested in both English and Arabic um, we have a table just downstairs near the auditorium um, feel free to stop by and pick up a uh, program which has all the information in there um, I mean sessions start from about children's sessions from about 45 dirhams and the adults from 65 and above um, they, we have s many many authors over a hundred authors uh, both Arabic speaking and English speaking. We've also got German authors and a French author who will be joining us this year. Um, it's it's a great, great um, location and, and, and event, and I really would urge you to visit us, especially for the students. It will be very inspirational to meet authors and get the opportunity to speak to them directly, and, and hopefully for those who are aspiring authors, it will be a great, um, great ambiance for them. Um, if um, so, as I said, we have programs downstairs. Please do stop by. If you have any questions at all, please do come down and, and, and speak to me directly. Thank you very much. Uh, hi, I'm Michelle. I'm the chairperson of the Old Library. The Old Library is the oldest English-speaking uh, lending library in Dubai. We've we've been in existence since 1969. We are in Daktak in Mall of the Emirates. Uh, we have approximately 21,000 books and 2,000 members. We are a membership library. We are all volunteers. Nobody is being paid to work in the library. We just feel very strongly about it. We have a beautiful children's section, and uh, we help the students by um, offering um, volunteer work in ha uh, aid of uh, community service or Duke of Edinburgh um, uh, volunteer service. Um, I don't know what else I can say. <laughs> Come on, then. Uh, uh, 15 years and above. It's it's usually the Duke and Edinburgh and, or, or community service for the international <coughs> baccalaureate. That's what we do. We have a waiting list because um, a lot of a lot of uh, students l want to come and work with us. It's very simple work. I mean, it's just you know shelving books and everything, uh, and it's once a week or twice a week, depending on, on, on their schedule and on, the, on their exams and everything. How can they approach you? They come to the library. We have to be a, you have to be a member to... Uh, I, have, we have a, um, I have a table downstairs. You can come and I can give you brochures and all our information. We also, at one point, we did also for students who wanted to do the one week um, work, at, at some of the schools do this, uh, a work thing of one week. I don't, I don't want to discourage it, but some days are busy and some days are not. And so for students, we don't want them to be too bored. It would be easier for them to find a job somewhere else. But we are quite willing to accept them if they want to come for the, for the whole week. What are the timings of your library? We are open from 10 to 6 every day except, public uh, except Fridays and public holidays. We also, during summer or, or um, like Ramadan or, or uh, Christmas holi holidays, we work on reduced hours. We do from 12 to 4 because we are all volunteers and we run out of volunteers during the, during the holidays. I mean, that's, that's <coughs> our problem. All of us are, are during the summer. A lot of, of parents leave. Yes, every Sunday morning we have story time for preschoolers. It's from, yeah, Sunday mornings from 10.30 to 11.30. Um, it's for preschoolers or for small children. We would love to be able to do something else, but again, we are, you know, Friday, Fridays, public holidays and everything. We just run out of people who can come and help us. So when children come and borrow books, do they have, is there a payment? Is there yes, it's a membership library. That's how we survive. It's 200, mem um, 200 dirhams for the membership, 50 dirhams for the joining fee. So the first year, it's a yearly membership. So 250 for the first year. <coughs> Come and see us, we'll get lots of more information when I'm downstairs. My name's Jan Sis and I'm from British Council. Um, we are the, the UK's cultural relations organisation and the main focus that we have is supporting and promoting the teaching and learning of English. 
Um, we work both with teachers and with learners. So for learners, um, we have our language classes. We have teaching centers in Dubai, Sharjah, and Abu Dhabi, where we have our teachers who run classes from age six up to adults with specialist courses in things like preparing for IELTS. Um, we also run classes in schools, so we can work with individual schools to provide, it's generally IELTS preparation that they want, direct for their students. Um, we have a range, a wide range of um, resources online. Again, we have a table downstairs. All of our websites um, have resources for free. It's all for free. Um, we have a website for uh, kids age under 12. We have a new one for teens. We have one for adults and we have Premier Skills, which is a website that we've developed in collaboration with the um, English Premier League. So it's sort of English and football. Um, we also are, we have apps for language learning and we are on Facebook and our, you are one of the first groups of people to hear the announcement but we've recently had we've reached two million likes on our um, MENA Facebook page and that one of the big things on that is that we have what we call the English doctor you can write in on English doctor days there is a person live you write in with your questions on English grammar vocabulary anything you like and you get an answer instantly so that's for learners for teachers Obviously, we have language classes um, in the same way as for students. We also have a lot of teacher training. Um, we do online primarily. There are possibilities of doing face-to-face -face teacher training. We're work looking into that for the UAE at the moment. Online training again. We have a brochure downstairs if you're interested. Um, we have some courses that are moderated. So you have a tutor and you have to attend not at a particular time, but you have to contribute to the discussion and each week there are tasks to complete. There are other self-access courses. We have seminars and webinars. Um, there's one tomorrow, one live, um, which will be recorded, Teaching English website and um, also a schools right. partnership program if you're interested in connecting with schools around the world. Thank you. Farouk Center. Uh, this is basically a culture center where we connect uh, east and west and uh, creating bridges between civilizations. Uh, since my time is very limited, I'll take you uh, a quick tour of what we have done uh, so far since uh, 2011. Uh, this was built actually initially in 1986. What we have done is to, to, um, to preserve the Arabic heritage or the Ottoman legacy, we rebuilt it in 2011 and opened to the public and we had half a million visitors last year. Uh, 60,000 from the DTCM in collaboration with them. The other was from within the UAE schools, uh, school districts, and the university as well. So what I want to do is real quick give you a tour of the mosque um, and what we do over there. This is how the mosque looks like. It's entirely handmade. <coughs> um, um, there are some elements taken from the Alhambra Castle from the city of Granada in Spain, from Morocco, and um, inspired by the Ottoman um, architecture as well from the Blue Mosque in Istanbul, Turkey. So this is basically a smaller version of the Blue Mosque in Istanbul, Turkey. So instead of taking a flight to Istanbul, why not to Jumeirah? Um, and this is how the mosque looks from outside and inside. <coughs> uh, some are for um, uh, visitors. Um, this, is, uh, this is how the lecture hall is that when we receive st uh, students and teachers, we give them the cultural awareness program, the best, the brief UAE history. We go back to uh, 1820, uh, uh, and we come to 1921, and then Sheikh Zayed birth, how the uh, constitution uh, started, and the first president, uh, Dubai, um, uh, for example, you know, when Sheikh Zayed, uh, 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 Sheikh Maktoum's family, they moved to Dubai from the coastal line of Abu Dhabi. So we go through that uh, as well. And this is how the mosque looks like from inside. Um, these are some of the school visits, uh, uh, Argentinian ambassador with his family, some visitors from Germany. I don't have the, you know, the, the remote control to do that. So this is our library, you can use that as well. Um, this is the Bin Laden group, uh, DDCM group, uh, and this is how the mosque was. You know. So basically what I'm doing is extending my invitation to you, <coughs> your school, uh, students, staff, and everybody, please feel free to um, um, contact me. Mr. Hussein will be distributing some envelopes to you. 
where the um, magazine, the brochures are there, my number is there. Um, please be in touch. Thank you so much. Where uh, This is uh, in Safa, <coughs> between Al Wasl and uh, Sheikh Zayed Road. It's very clear from Sheikh Zayed Road. It's very clear. Uh, you'll see the four minerals, the pencil shaped minerals. You can see it from the train. Also, actually, ex ex exit uh, 45. If you're driving from uh, the uh, Burj Al Arab, Burj, uh, Burj Khalifa, sorry, the brown signboard says Al Farooq Mosque. So it's not a mosque, it's a cultural center. Uh, and it's a golden opportunity for you. Please do not miss this chance. How many students can come at the same time? Um, <laughs> up to 200, 300, and 200, 250 would be good, actually. That's a, yeah. All right, so, uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just here to quickly introduce you to Guess and Gef. Guess is the <coughs> Gulf Education Supplies and Solutions Exhibition, which you'll see a bit of snapshots of. GEF is the Global Education Forum, and they both happen at the Dubai World Trade Center from the 4th to the 6th of March, 2014, and they're under the patronage of Sheikh Mohammed, and whoa, that was very quick. <laughs> All right, which... <laughs> so, uh, if I can just... Brings in over 350 companies, um, exhibiting their latest technologies when it comes to IT, ICT, when it comes to school furniture, curriculum building, and, and other supplies and solutions that schools and universities require. The forum mm -hmm. brings in spe uh, speakers from all around the world, and we have a lot of speakers coming in from the Middle East as well. We've got 11 world-class keynote speakers this year. We also have 70-plus abstract presentations and then 20-plus practical workshops. We also offer CPD training for uh, teachers and principals here, um, panel discussions, and roundtables. <coughs> the show itself is free of charge. You can go on the website, guesseducation.com, and register. You'll be receiving more information but through email and even direct mail as well. Um, just a quick <coughs> video of some of the organizations that associate themselves with us. Didacta, BISA from the UK, Detectas from Germany, World Didact from Switzerland. <coughs> We're in partnership with the Ministry of Education here in the U UAE, and we obviously work closely with the KHDA as well. With the ministry, they also support us, invite all these ministers in. Any questions? How do you select presenters? I'm sorry? How do you select presenters? Do they send you your presentations and there is a Yes, the abstract is what we do. We, we select them. We get so many submissions and then we kind of have a team that reviews them and then selects them. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Keksha Basu. I'm the global coordinator for the United Nations Environment Program, Major Groups for Children and Youth and the founder president of Green Hope UAE. Green Hope was founded to carry forward the real legacy after Rio Plus 20 in 2012, and our main goal is to spread awareness among students and all sections of civil society through our ground level <coughs> community projects. Since its inception a year ago, Green Hope UAE has now spread its reach internationally, and we work and partner with several international organizations, such as Taking It Global, International Youth Council, 350.org, and now the Dubai Municipality as well. In September 2013, Green Hope was in Kenya, where we began our partnership with Nobel Peace Prize winner Wangari Matai's organization, the Green Belt Movement. We signed the peace pledge and also watered the tree that she planted after winning the Nobel Peace Prize in 2004. In August 2013, Green Hope UAE achieved its uh, dream of reaching the United Nations General Assembly, where we were introduced to over a thousand youth delegates at the 12th United Nations Youth Assembly held in New York, USA. That sustainability amongst all sections of civil society, especially children and youth, through our ground level community projects 
and we focus on future justice, sustainable consumption and production, biodiversity conservation, social upliftment, carbon footprint, and stopping land degradation. So we believe in education for sustainable development and we have conducted several academies and we've been able to reach out to over a thousand students from more than 25 schools all across the UAE. So through our field projects we reach out to students and these are some of the events which we have participated in. And these are our contact details. You can like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, write to us, or register on our website. And we'd just like to thank the KHDA for giving us this opportunity to reach out to so many school principals and teachers, and of course, to their students. So thank you. Hello. Hi, I'm from Growl Media. My name's Sophia. We are an app development company. There's a team, international team, that's come together to produce uh, apps for early learning education. Uh, the way this came about, like most entrepreneurial ventures, was that the founder, Dinesh Lalvani, was looking for apps for his two-year-old tech-savvy son. And like you all know in the room here, most children can now use mobile phones and iPads very easily. So he couldn't find any quality apps that were culturally relevant, that also taught his son Hindi as well as literacy and numeracy, and therefore he decided to develop some of his own, which is how we came about with Appy Kids, which is a brand which operates underground media. Now, with Appy Kids, we have two amazing characters. The first one we came about launching was Alfie and his best friend, Hearty, and they go on these magical journeys through the magic bioscope, something that was very familiar in Indian culture and even across the Arab world for the longest time in terms of developing people's imagination. Um, this launched our first app, which was Appy Animals, which led on to other apps. And our Arabic character, synonymous for this part of the world, is uh, Z, and we launched the app Z's Alifba, uh, which some of you may have heard of. And Z is this young girl, her role model is Ibn Battuta. So she has a magical telescope and she goes on these adventures which teach children the Arabic alphabet and now also teaches in French as well. So these are the two main characters that we've developed and are operating under our apps. Um, like you can see, this is the first app that we actually produced, which was Appy Animals, aimed at children aged one to three and gave them the opportunity to look. If you look through the slides, you'll see that these are some of the scenes from the apps themselves. And we had a nursery rhyme as well and we then launched the storybook app itself as well. And this was very popular. It allowed parents and teachers to sit down with children one-on-one -on -one or on their own to go through this interactive storybook, both in print as well as the app itself. You can see some of the scenes. That's the app itself. And then this is the Z app itself as well. And you can see if, if you look through the scenes, that's the navigation and so on. So to give you some background, you've already seen that we've got some grassroots events that are on. We really appreciate feedback from teachers and parents as well as children themselves, and therefore we do a lot of test groups with them. And therefore we'd really appreciate it if anyone had any information or felt like they had anything to say on our apps. They're free to download in the uh, Apple iTunes store. And thus far you can see we've reached over actually over 250,000 downloads. And um, if you just contact myself or Dolly, who's downstairs, you'll see the big yellow sign, and we'll give you more information if need be. Thank you. Hi, everyone. It's nice to meet you all. Um, my story is pretty much the same as the Nash's. I was a mum. Um, I was in advertising, actually, for over 15 years. And then as a mum, um, I came across a big hurdle. My daughter was uh, studying Arabic in school, and I looked around for resources and couldn't find any that, was, that really grabbed her or my attention. And uh, that's when I formed uh, the Caramel Theory. I'm probably going to skip through because I'm quite scared of that yellow bell out there. <laughs> but very quickly, um, I'm sure you, all of you have played these games at some point, 
And uh, I asked myself, well, are these games or are these learning tools? And honestly, uh, I came up with the answer that uh, I'm sure all of you will agree they can be used as a great uh, learning tool. So with that, I'd like to introduce you to the caramel theory. Who are you? Who are we? Well, if you call us a theory, then we one we, uh, you, that you'll put into practice. If you call us a blackboard, we one you would play on. And if you call us inventors, we simply say we reinvent. Um, what do we do? We are an educational resource design studio. So primarily what we do is we create educational resources out of textbooks. And what we also can do is come to your schools and support you by training your teachers and also doing workshop for your parents. Um, we simply get into the whole mindset by understanding the challenges that students, teachers, and parents face today. And then we mix up the juice by creating innovative resources that combat these challenges. So simply put, what can we help you with? Well, we can work alongside your teaching panel to create these educational resources and, um, and really take today's technology scenario into your backyard. On that note, um, I'd like to introduce you to, well, not gibberish, but the un understandable for a lot of us. I mean, Arabic is really that big stumbling block. We kind of, it's Greek to us, it's gibberish to us, until we uh, really get into the subject matter. And um, that's really what I felt. I felt completely lost when it came to Arabic. And now I think with uh, something fishy about Arabic, we can change that. So um, just very quickly, I'm going to show you all the <laughs> screenshots of what we have. That's really what we hope for the future, the app in the classroom. And if you'd like to know more, please feel free to come down to the stand, and I'd uh, take you through the rest of it. Thank you. Hi, my name is Tom Ashlurins, and I uh, volunteer for uh, TESOL Arabia. Most of you probably know that TESOL Arabia is the second largest uh, English teachers organization in uh, the world, pr pretty much. We've got a membership of about 2,500 uh, <coughs> permanent <coughs> members of the organization, and we hold the Perhaps the biggest, uh, well, no, definitely the biggest English teachers conference in uh, the UAE every March. It's usually the second weekend of March. I've got these beautiful posters that I'm very happy to give uh, a copy of to everyone uh, who wants to display it to your teachers. Um, this is one important thing I wanted to talk about, but the other thing is uh, a recent brainchild of mine. We in the Dubai chapter feel that we are not uh, really connecting very well with the schools. So we came up with a scheme. Well, we need you. We would like to organize uh, free professional development sessions for English language teachers or teachers who use English as their medium of instruction at your schools. Uh, the details are on uh, our blog. And um, I've got flyers downstairs and my business card. Basically, if you contact me, I'm very happy to uh, negotiate with you when and where and what kind of workshop you would like for your English teachers so that we get to know you, get to see you, and get to g and start talking to each other. That's what I wanted to say, really. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. My name is Marwa Lakrobi. I'm president of the UAE Board on Books for Young People which is uh, a section, the UAE section in, uh, from uh, IBI, IBI, which is the International Board on Books for Young People, which is in Sw Sw Switzerland. And uh, we are um, presenting UAE, and we, our aim is to bring uh, children and books together. We do a lot of things, but we don't have that much time to explain what we what we do, but uh, we we focus in uh, a lot of things like um, promoting uh, promoting reading and uh, uh, w through uh, through teaching uh, through storytelling and uh, um, having like workshops for 
uh, teachers, librarians, and uh, uh, school teachers. Um, it doesn't matter they are um, Arab, uh, Arabs or uh, um, English uh, English uh, learners. So we focus on all all the teachers here in UAE to um, to help us to reach our aim, which is uh, bringing uh, children and books together. So uh, what we uh, what we also do is. Um, we are the organizer of Etisalat Award for Arabic uh, Children Literatures, which is, which is the, big, uh, the biggest uh, and largest uh, award uh, in the Arab world. And it's giving to the best, uh, to be, to the best books uh, being published uh, um, in, non, uh, in, um, in like for, for different ages. Um, and now we are in the six six year uh, organizing this award. Uh, usually, we al we announce the winners in uh, in Sharjah International Book Fair, and we aim to have like uh, new books written by Emirati authors and illustrated by uh, Emirati illustrators. So. We in, we bring um, uh, uh, we do uh, uh, intensive workshop for those new talent, uh, um, uh, Emirati authors and illustrators to encourage them to create those books and at, and at the end they they maybe they will have uh, publishers that will like their books and will publish it. <coughs> and. Uh, only this, this is very important for you because what we do is workshop, intensive workshop. We bring a trainer from outside and we do workshop for writer, illustrators, and school librarians. So if you would like to have more information, please visit our stand downstairs. And, and for the last thing, I just want to say that we have, uh, we launched a Read, Dream, Create campaign. It's a reading campaign. And we want to uh, get into schools uh, and all the Emirates. So if you would like us to come to your school to bring authors to read for your uh, students, we, we would love to do that. And it's all for free. The workshop and the reading and all the activities that we do, it's for free. Gentlemen, assalamu alaikum and uh, hi to all of you. My name is Ali Amjad and I'm representing Dubai Electricity and Water Authority. I represent the Marketing Communication Department and today why I'm here is basically on a follow-up session for the Conservation Award, which was done earlier in Waterworks as well. We have been consistently been participating with KHDA in trying to promote the Conservation Award, which is more like a competition for schools uh, in the Dubai region. I see a lot of familiar fa faces already. Some of you have already been participating with us consistently and some are new. Some have queries and some need some more queries and answers in regards to the Conservation Award. So for that purpose, I'm just here to actually, you know, answer all the questions in regards to whatever you want to know about the Conservation Award. I have the criteria and the answers to basically how you can actually participate with us in the Conservation Award. So the main purpose of actually being here and talking to you as parents, teachers, is basically if you have any idea, uh, any questions in regards to the Conservation Award, whether or not you're actually clear about how to actually go about the Conservation Award, or if you want to be registering for the conservation award, if you've not been familiar with that before, now is your time. We've got the registration forms with us right here. I've uh, also got basically some pamphlets here, which will make it easier for you to understand the different uh, segments and categories of conservation award. So mainly, that's what I'm going to be encouraging you all to do. If you have any, any, uh, uh, anything to ask or anything you want to know about the conservation award, I'll be here. I'm downstairs. You've got uh, seen my booth most probably. I think a lot of you have also visited it. If not, please do come around. Let me let you know. Uh, let me tell you about the conservation, and let me tell you what this program actually aims in in terms of benefiting the school, the teachers, the students, and everyone. So, moreover, I've also got detailed presentations in a USB format in a soft copy. So, if you are more willing to actually learn about this. I'm going to welcome you all to our stand. I'm also going to be giving out my contact details in case you want to actually reach out to me for any more suggestions or something that you think could actually be useful in terms of merging with our uh, program in terms of conservation award. I would welcome all that. And uh, for now, that would be all. Thank you. I'm sure everyone's familiar with Scrabble. But what you don't know is that worldwide, it's played like a mind sport, similar to chess. I mean, you just saw the, the youth chess 
Championship in Alain recently. Very similar to that, just before that, we had the World Youth Scrabble Championship right here in Dubai. And we hosted that. We had about 150 kids from 20 countries taking part. And the UAE, in fact, did really well in that. We, have, we came in second after Pakistan, who won. And uh, what we're looking at is to expand this so that we have more kids taking part. Now, Scrabble, this is what works literacy, but Scrabble is also about math as well as a number of other skills. And it's an all-round learning tool. And uh, you know the competition doesn't hurt, of course. Kids love competition, and they always have fun. So they're learning without really even knowing that they're learning. So what, what I'd like to reach out to people here, especially, I mean, I've seen so many wonderful initiatives here. Uh, we're really keen to roll out an Arabic version of, well, I mean, there is an Arabic version of Scrabble. We're keen to roll out an Arabic tournament for Scrabble as well. And you know we don't know the first thing about it. We're, we've been playing English language Scrabble since uh, 1990. But we really like to start with Arabic Scrabble. So I know there are a number of people here who work with Arabic language in particular. So you know, it'd be great to connect with you guys and just see that. We are going to be going out to schools, and we're going to be getting more kids involved so that they do take part in the future as well. The next World Youth Championship will be in Sri Lanka in uh, August, I believe. So we are gearing up, and we're getting a team together for that as well. That's it. Just short and sweet. <laughs> Thank you. That's the end of the session. Um, please feel free uh, for all the partners who spoke today. They have tables downstairs. Go and see them. Get lots of information and get involved in their activities. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you.